For Scottish soldier Harry Marshall, traumatic experiences during a deployment to Bosnia would change his life forever, as he dealt with the devastating effects of PTSD. One night I was sitting at home and a firework went off and I started to go into a flashback. And I didn't realise until I was sitting down on the side of the road that I was having a flashback. And as I was sitting there breathing, an innocent member of the public came by and put their hand on my shoulder to ask if I was okay. And because I never seen them coming, I got startled and I went straight into a flashback, stood up and ran head on my taxi at 40 miles an hour and broke both my legs, broke all the ribs on one side, smashed all my eyes up, woke up in any, and I was like, what just happened? I went to the recruitment centre, never told anybody I was going. I basically just turned up and um, I, was, I was asked to go to the two-day selection in Glen Course here in Scotland. And I intended to join the Royal Highland Fusiliers, same regiment as my brother. So I was selected and I set about training. When we got to the end of phase two, of training, all the guys that were going to the Royal Highland Fusiliers were told that we would be fast tracked. Yous are going straight, yous are finishing up early, and yous are going straight to Warminster to do a, one, a week's pre deployment training, then you're going straight to Bosnia. It's called Op Harvest, that's the military term for the operation. You were detailed to then go hand out leaflets, first of all, in the communities and different cities and towns. Then you went back and you chapped on doors and you asked the locals, look, do you have munitions here? And the reason we're doing so is because these are un unsafe. They're very unsafe and we don't think you should keep them in your homes. A young boy came forward with a black bag. So one of our infantry soldiers went out and met him took the bag off and looked inside it, realised it was M79 and tank grenades. He turned, he handed the bag to Ben and Brad, who were the two bomb disposal experts attached to us that day. They pulled one of these M79 and tank grenades out. They were showing us how to de deprime de de them, to take them apart and make them safe. And then after they'd finished showing us, they took the bag, turned, and started walking towards the UXO pit. Uh, and as they were doing so, they were taking more out to deprime them. Corporal Bradley, he took out one of them 79 that tank grenade, and when he went to uh, uh, deprime it, he had discharged in his hands. The blast itself carried me off the warrior, and I flew back about 15 feet, <clears throat> and I landed on my back and I was badly wounded, and I could he hear lots of ringing in my ears. So I, start, I, I stand up, get to my feet, still a wee bit winded, and I run round the back of the armoured fighting vehicle. Just before I get to round the corner, I can see Corporal Bradley lying there. I knew that he'd died instantly. Instantly I realised I've got a lot of casualties here. In that moment, you don't get a chance to think. You're acting on instinct. And I sort of realised in that moment that so long as i done my best, that there'd be a chance. So there was other people, medics had arrived. I'd helped carry Ben onto the chopper. And then I sort of, I took myself away from the scene a wee bit. And I thought, I can't stand here any longer. Because by this point, all the adrenaline's wore off and it's just me in this situation. So there was a, a further couple of incidents that happened at that time in that tour um, that sort of uh, reinfirmed the trauma. So they sent me a psychiatrist and I explained everything to him. I explained all the trauma, the incidents, the, everything, full detail. And he made a recommendation after three visits. He made a recommendation for me First of all, we put on light duties, but ultimately I needed to be medically discharged for the forces because of the flashbacks. So basically, I leave the forces 
I went through the same transition as every military veteran does. A very tough one. It's no easy. You, you cannot make sense of anything in life, let alone how civvies work. I've become a qualified plumbing engineer and I push on to work hard for the next foreseeable future, six or seven years, whatever it was. In 2000, about 2006, let's say, I start to get the real effects of flashbacks and, and PTSD affecting my everyday life. I went for a meal with my wife and we sat in a restaurant and I had nothing else to worry about in this world apart from looking at her. That moment, just that moment where you think, my life is perfect. But then your body would start to react against it with survivor's guilt and say to you, you shouldn't be doing this. Why do you deserve to be happy? I then get to a sort of a weird stage where I go through a separation because of my PTSD, because I'm not able to communicate, and that drives me even further into the gutter. And I couldn't face the reality of falling apart in front of people. I wanted to be alone. I packed a small bag, grabbed the bag, and headed off. So this is where uh, this is where I came when I got really unwell, and I would just sleep under the canopy to the trees. But on nights where it was really, really bad, and the weather was like this, I would come down here at night because I know that the public wouldn't be here, and I would sleep in this building. This is also where my mental health started to plummet. And as you can see, it's a pretty dangerous place to be um, if you're not feeling the best and you're feeling suicidal. I turned out I ended up spending almost six months there. And that's a long, long time. That's a full operational tour in the woods. Even, even soldiers are not asked to do that. Just by chance, I remembered an advertisement on the radio, the charity breathing space. <clears throat> they get me to a hospital, first of all. I've got a temporary speech loss because of the overwhelming anxieties and stuff like that and a long period of time uncommunicating. I, I hear about Horseback UK when I'm going through my recovery. Uh, it's a military charity. It's just been set up to use horsemanship. And I'm like, horsemanship? They're like, ah, oh, horsemanship. So they're like, okay, let's, let's go with that. And we go over and they ask us, has anybody ever worked with horses before? And everybody put their hand on, bar me. So I've got zero experience. That's great, that's what we want. We want you to have as much, get as much out of this as possible. So, I, Lunch time comes, goes, and we go round to the round pen, which is an outdoor arena for the horses. And you're there on your own with your horse, and the, uh, one of the founders, Emma, is instructing you how to do this. And what they tell you to do is, is they tell you, okay, when you're ready, we want you to drop your carrot stick and bow your head. So I do this, drop my carrot stick and I bow my head. The horse leaves the outside of the arena and walks into the inside the arena. My horse is called Blue, by the way. And he puts his head resting over my left shoulder, with his head just dangling down the front there. And I can only describe it as overwhelming. My whole body was skin, everything was on end. And it was very much a an all-inclusive sensational feeling that is hard to describe. It's an emotional connection that you've never been able to make with any other living being. You've just made it with a two and a half ton horse. And then Emma says to me, turn to the right. So I turn to the right, the horse comes with me. And I'm like, this is fascinating. How did that just happen? Because I can't even get somebody in the street to understand me. But here this horse 
is following me as if I've got control. And I just start crying. Just tears of joy. Thank you. It never says it. But the look between the two of us was, thank you. I really mean this, thank you. I've never felt a sensation like this before in my life. This is, uh, this is where I volunteer. This is Confon Stables we're heading to. And uh, I started volunteering here after my time at horseback because I enjoyed working with horses so much. And it's just good to see how versatile horses can be within the community. And they're also looking at helping armed forces veterans up here as well. If anybody in the local area of Perth as an armed forces veteran, then they're trying to encourage them to come along as well, do a bit of volunteering. Horsemanship is one of the most basic, basic recovery methods that has an effect that is second to none, because a horse is like a mirror of yourself. A horse can tune into your heartbeat. So if you want to be, have a successful day with a horse, you and the horse need to get to a good place. And when you and, the horse get to that, you and the horse get to that good place, then in time, what's going to happen is, is your anxieties are going to subside. And that horse is going to give you so much benefit. It has got a magical element to it. And if anybody can get herself to that position, then you should be proud of yourself because it is a tough road to go down. It's a tough thing to give up in all your, your pride and your beliefs that you were a fighting warrior, you were a soldier, you were a proud individual. There's a time for being macho and there's a time for seeking help because we don't want to see another single veteran suicide. Go and get some, some experience with some horses and you'll never look back, you won't, you will never look back because honestly it has changed my life so much. I don't foresee me spending the rest of my life without a horse in my vicinity. I actually feel like a cowboy. I feel like a proper cowboy because cowboys understood this centuries ago. And I might live in Scotland, I know Texas, but I feel like a cowboy. The rest of my life is now mine to do what I please with, thanks to horses. <laughs>